Hey guys, welcome to another video and in this video I am going to cover one of the most important things in the application process statement of purpose. If you don't know what is statement of purpose, probably you are not familiar with GRE and MS application. Statement of purpose is a paragraph or an essay in which you have to mention some few points about yourself and you have to present yourself to the universities which you are applying to. Statement of purpose is extremely important and I would like if you pay attention in this video. Also, I have mentioned the transcript of the link. I have written a blog post on my blog. If you haven't checked it out, please do it. All of this video's highlights will be given in that. So if you don't want to listen to me, you can just go there and check that out. Uh, also, if you don't have to write anything, if you miss any point, you can go there and check the blog out. I will mention all the important links down in the description. I put my email also. So if you want to comment, if you want to email me regarding any doubts, please feel free to do that. Uh, what is statement of purpose? Statement of purpose, if I have to explain you in a very basic way, is like you get one chance to text uh, your crush that you want to date somebody and uh, consider that as a university. And you just get one chance to present yourself the best so that they go on a date with you. And that is exactly what statement of purpose stands for. You have to present yourself so good that so that the university are much interested in you. There's a lot of difference between a CV and a statement of purpose. So do not compare themselves. You don't have to put everything you have mentioned in your CV into a statement of purpose. Statement of a purpose is a document which will give insights to the university of who you are more than just a piece of paper. So I will mention all the points one by one and uh, I'm going to post a screenshot of the format. The format is not the only important thing. There's a lot of important things I'm going to mention. Uh, I have jotted down nine points here, which I think will be much more beneficial than just looking at the format for writing SOPs. But also remember that I have posted a link in the description where it links to my blog post. You can read the whole transcript of this video there. Number one, collect all the information. Information such as transcripts, your internship details, your project details, your thesis details, uh, some of the extracurricular details. If you were a part of an event or if you're part of some college fest, you should collect that and you should jot down. Uh, also, I would recommend that you jot down the responsibilities uh, which you had during your internships. Please write down this in your phone, in your note section and try to read it every single day. SOP is not a small process. It might take up to three weeks, four weeks, because uh, to get to the first draft, it's a little easier, but to finalize the document which you have to send to the university, it takes a lot of time. Why I'm saying that you should jot down the information on your phone is because you're already done with your graduation or you are in six semester and you have been in your college since two or two and a half or three years or four years. Now to remember all the information at one go is not easy. So you have to see the back information to remember the information while you're writing. Second point, read some sample SOPs. Now read some sample SOPs, do not copy. Uh, when you're going to read a lot of SOPs, right, you'll get acquainted to the format of statement of purpose. Also, you can pick up good things like if somebody uh, wrote some kind of good quote or somebody put some information in a great way then it will be beneficial for you you can jot down in your notebook that uh, from this SOP I picked up this information from this SOP I picked up this information so when you're going to write it right you will have whole paper of great key points which you can put in your SOP and compile it to make a great essay third point make the first draft uh, making the first draft can take a long time. Rather than getting technical with this information, I'll tell you my experience what happened to me. I had this idea, I wrote down all the information of my and to get to my first draft, which was like half page, it took me two or two and a half weeks. I had this idea in my mind that I'm going to write this, but uh, I didn't sit down and write it because I was just not getting that vibe, you know. Creating a first drive might take time, so I would recommend that you start early. You can start right now and create like a little bit, little bit paragraphs. As soon as you're starting your applications or you're done with your GRE, you can just compile it and ask somebody to proofread. Number fourth, 
don't copy your cv into your statement of purpose do not do that do not do not do that that will be the biggest mistake you'll do imagine i am the application officer and i'm reading application and there's a cv i just read that you did this you did this you graduated in this year uh, you know this kind of language and uh, you have done this course etc etc now i'm going to your statement of purpose and i'm reading it and it's the same boring information you don't want to do that you have to engage the reader to the core you have to tell them information which you haven't said or written in your cv you have to give an insight to yourself statement of purpose is the, like the last document which a professor or whoever is scrutinizing your application will read so it is a very very important document and you have to be very focused on it uh it might be a game changer for you it might be a game killer for you okay now let me take an example how not to copy from your cv to your statement of purpose imagine i am writing about my internship i did my internship in 2015 uh from june to may in this this company and i did the following things i was part of this team i presented these ideas and that's it let, and now let me give an example to rephrase it due during the summer of 2015 i got a great chance to intern with this infrastructure company uh this infrastructure company has been founded in this this and uh, it's been a big name and i was very fortunate to work with them um i got to learn many things and um, now tell them that how what you learned during the internship has uh, been affecting you in your course work how that will affect you in your graduate studies how that will affect your job if you want to not study further and look for a job how that experience will count so much in your job now number 5th write a story story is super important so i'll tell you my own story okay for giving you an example during my second semester i had to take a course called electromagnetism and optics and i didn't like physics in school so this course was not very easy for me uh i got a f in mid sem and i was hoping for, to get a, at least a d so that i don't fail and there's not a f on my transcript but uh, i got a f on final and this is a true story this happened to me but i think that f is the best thing which has happened to me during my college time uh i got an f and my gpa went down to 2.44 and it was a worse the next semester when i joined in my academic advisor told me that you shouldn't take so many courses because if you uh, go down then 2.5 uh, out of 4 you will be on probation and that is not good so i told my professor that sir uh, trust me i will do better this time and i know that i had to do better i studied so much and got like above 3 3.3 or something in my third semester and after that i maintained my gpa and during my final year i got a fellowship for excellent academic performance for the year 2014 and 15 so isn't that great like i could have told this story just by mentioning that i got a fellowship for 2014 and 15 for excellent academic performance but when the reader was reading my story they were more engaged they want to know more about me and not just about my curriculum and not just about my transcript and not just about my grades they want to know how i overcome difficulties during my studies and how that will change my life during my job or during my graduate studies six point get it proofread sometimes what happens we have been working on the same document from a lot of days and we don't see the mistakes which other person can see if you give somebody your document or if you give somebody your sop they'll see that uh, this doesn't make sense or there's a grammar error or this doesn't go right or if you want to present yourself in a different way uh, but if the reader is not getting it then it is not solving the problem it is very difficult to see mistakes by yourself in your own written document so i would recommend that you get it proofread from your seniors or get it proofread from your friends i think they'll be happy to help you if you ask them politely there are also some websites i am going to link in the description you can check them out i am not sure if they are that good because i have not tried but i have heard a lot about them seven point every statement of purpose is different just like every university is different every university has a different set of rules uh, that means they have different expectations from their students that they want this kind of information from their statement of purpose or this kind of information like for example uh, when i was applying to tu delft 
they asked me that tell us three examples of projects which I want to do during my masters there. So I had to th think it through and I had to tell them that this is the project I am going to pursue. It is not very necessary that you have to tell them the exact. They just want to know that you have some kind of idea in your field that you want to pursue. Uh, all the universities have different kind of details given on the website. So I would recommend that you go and check those. For example, when I was applying to Swedish universities, I mentioned that I went to exchange there. And that's why I want to come back because I love the process, how they teach and stuff. And when I was applying to US universities, I told them that uh, I studied from US and I look forward to them. Uh, this is a big motivational factor for me to apply to states because uh, I've been studying from them, I've been gaining knowledge and I love the way they teach and I love the information, the knowledge they have. Uh, I look myself in that position someday in the future. Good example, right? So you have to put uh, your personal examples in your SOP. Don't worry that what they'll think. Number eight, do not copy from seniors. Do not copy. Okay, this would be the biggest mistake you have done. Uh, a lot of universities have plagiarism software. If you don't know about plagiarism, plagiarism is the term defined as if you're copying from somebody else. When I was applying to University of Florida, there was a box that you have to put your statement of purpose into that. I'm sure that they're going to run a plagiarism check. And if it matches from any of the seniors, then they'll probably throw away my SOP. Why would they read something which is already copied? Do not copy from your seniors. Please do not do that. Uh, a great way to check your plagiarism is from Grammarly. Uh, I remember I used it in my thesis, like I wrote a 100 page thesis. I, I bought a premium version of Grammarly that was like 1800 rupees. I do not recommend for you to buy that uh, just for that much. But if you're checking like one or two page, I think it's free. Also, you can check your grammar there. Do not copy from seniors. Do not ask seniors if they can send SOPs to you. Nine point grammar. Grammar is super important. I mentioned already in the previous point. Go to Grammarly, put your document in and check the grammar. It tells you where to put a comma, where to put an exclamation mark, if there's wrong spacing. And it will tell you if uh, your tense is wrong, if anything's wrong. I mentioned Grammarly's link in down below. You can check that out. Uh, you go and upload your document to Grammarly and check what kind of mistakes you're making. Okay, do that. Okay, I'm putting the format again. You can check the format right here. And if I have missed any point, uh, you can check my blog post down below. You don't have to write all this information. I've written already a blog. You, uh, the link is down below. You can check that out. It will be very beneficial for you. There is also a download link in that blog. So you can just download and share with your friends if you want. So the word limit is around 800 to 1200 words and it should be fitting in two pages. Uh, don't cramp it. There's a definite guideline on every website that you should leave this kind of margin, uh, fixed margins, and you should have this font and I think 12 font size and Times New Roman is very common. So you should use that. Okay. This is a lot of information. So if you have missed any points, you can always check out my blog. So to conclude this video, number one, sell yourself. You have to present yourself. If you're a 10, you present yourself a hundred. That is how it works. Point two, stick to your own words. Do not copy, do not take information from anywhere. Stick to your own words. Point three, shape it how you want it in your future. So if you want to work after graduate study, you have to tell them what your future endeavors are, what you want to do, how this graduate study will change you in the future or how it will change your future, how it will impact you. Number four, show specifics why you like to go to their universities that uh, you like some professor or you like this course and write down yourself as an individual. Uh, I will give insight to the reader. Do not copy paste, do not copy your CV, give insight to the reader. I think that's, that's it. There was a lot of information in this video. If you have missed, you can always check out my blog post. Uh, thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more MSN US videos. Thank you so much guys for watching and uh, yeah, until then, see you in the next one.